Okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, he said he's tired, so I think I'm doing most of it. Welcome to another <laughs> episode of Hey Man. We're in Miami. I am jo- I'm Jake Wolf- Jacob Wolf, and this is Josh Wolf. Hey, man. Um, hey, man. You uh, you all right? I'm all right. I'm going to move this. I'm all right. I uh, I got to sleep later than you last night. Yep. Yes, you did. Where where, where are we? We're in Miami. Yeah. Um, and uh, I got to sleep later than you last night. I get to sleep maybe around 4. Yeah, we didn't get back to the hotel until, like, I think 2 or close to it. Is that right? Yeah. Well, because we went... That second show was supposed to start at 10.30, but we didn't start till close to 11 because we went over in the first show. When you say we went over... You. <laughs> you went over. <laughs> and then, you know, Friday Night Late Shows, he does uh, he does mushrooms, his Friday Night Late Shows. So his Late Shows tend to go a little off the rails. Uh, um, so, so I, yeah. Like, look at him right now. I wish you could see him. He's resting his nose on his microphone. I. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, things got. He he even came into the back uh, as he was on stage. He walked backstage and went, hey, come out here real quick. And I said, yeah. And he goes, if I start rambling, just get out here and stop me. And then I said, okay. And that was at about the 40 minute mark. Yeah, I didn't know how long I was going to go. I've been enjoying the mushroom shows. Um, I think I might up the dose. Why? You were pretty dosed up last night. Yeah, I want it to be a little more... Here's my thing. If you go higher than two grams, you're closer to a hero trip where you're going to for real deal hallucinate. Yeah, but... You want to for real deal hallucinate on stage? Huh. Everybody's faces are going to be moving. The lights are going to be moving. You're going to be moving. Yeah, here's my, here's my, here's my thing. Okay. <sighs> Okay. I, for the, I don't know how long I'm going to do this. Not yep. stand up, but the mushroom part. Mushroom, mushroom show, right? That's what I'm saying. You've only been doing it for so little. Don't, don't go full, full blast first, like first thing. Well, this is the thing. Like, I think I've figured, I think I've done this amount. And so now I think I just need to do a little more. I, 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 you always ask me, hey, do you think this is right? And then I tell you what to take. And then you always take more than what I tell you to take. Right. Right, but here's my th- okay. That's true. It's very true. Like you ask me for advice, and then he doesn't listen to my advice. Like, uh, well, I, that's like, why am I even here? Well, I'm asking your opinion, and then I want to hear your opinion, and then not take it into consideration. That's not true. I only, I only took what you said last night. Well, originally I had stated with just eat this one, and then the cap of this one, and then somehow we gradually got to yeah, just eat both. I knew that wasn't gonna be enough. But but I, here's my here's my thing. And I and I didn't go. I was gonna eat that third one. You told me not to, and I didn't. Third one? We never talked about a third one. Oh, maybe that was just me. Oh my god. Um, but I, I um. Oh my lord. In order for this kind of experiment to work the way I want it to, I, I, there's gonna have to be a point where I take too much. Look, I could start bringing my scale on the road from now on if you want. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, I got a scale. For what reasons? You know exactly what reasons. Yeah, because he weighs himself every morning. No, I mean I I used to weigh something. It wasn't uh it wasn't myself. Um, you you were weighing weed. Mm hmm. Yeah, I don't think I've ever used one of those little scales before. I like them. Um, but but I think in order for this experiment to work, you I'm, have to go I'm over the need top to one time at find, least. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, where I, are we next? Columbus? E- yes. yes. So Columbus is the experiment weekend? E- yes. Columbus, Ohio, the, the end of this month. I believe it's the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of June. So are that the dates Friday for Friday Night Late Show, I guess we're going to get a little loopy. Yeah, I guess so. I I I have faith in you. I know you can. You're a professional. You know what I'm saying. Like I I, I have faith that you're going to be able to keep yourself on. Uh, for those on of you, point. by the way, for those of you wondering why I'm doing this, it's because I I I've been doing this a long time, and so I just want to. Walk down every street possible before I stop doing it. That's fair, and that's I understand it. that. That's yeah, a, no, that's I all it is. That. I understand that. But that's why, like, man, I, 
I have changed. It, it's not just been with drugs, guys, but like I did a tour. I did part of my tour, not recently, but in the past, just sitting the entire set. I've done part of a tour just standing in front of a mic, never took the mic out. I've done part of a tour only with the mic out. I just like to, when I do stop doing this, I don't, I want to be able to say I did basically, not basically, I did everything I wanted to do in every angle and every aspect and every way I ever wanted to. Right. Next up's an acid show. I'm not curious <laughs> about that. So I doubt Yeah, I'll you're do not, that. but I am. Um, and so today, m since my brain is a little slow, or than usual. Yep. And I know that I probably generally uh, run the show. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm handing the handing baton it to, me. to you today. Okay. Um. Well, we are in we're we are in Miami, and we're staying. Uh, Love the fact that you. Every time we say, gotta. I feel like I feel like it's only appropriate. Do you know what I'm saying? So, uh, we're staying at a hotel. Um, in it's like what the arts district, right? It, Something like that. It's such a cool spot. Yeah, all the walls are painted. It's like everything's got a. It's not even a mural, but all of it's just like street art painted across all the walls. Some really cool stores. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I think I've had, or we had, one of the best appetizers, meals, whatever you want to call it. I've ever had uh, tell, at our hotel's restaurant. Tell the tell everybody the hotel. Oh, I I, sh I should. Well, this isn't gonna be out. We're gonna be out. Oh of yeah, that's that. right. Uh, yeah. It's the Arlo by Winwood. Um, they have a restaurant in the lobby that is open at six p.m. If you go and when you go, go and order the oxtail beignet. Okay. Oh, it is a. It's uh. It's not a traditionally baked beignet like a traditional beignet. If you're gonna get in New Orleans, is more flaky and airy than it is doughy, right? The this one in New Orleans is correct. Yeah, but the one out, the one here is more of a donut consistency, which I think is was honestly more important for this dish. It was a homemade beignet with a little brown sugar or cinnamon on it, yeah, topped with a jerk oxtail with creme fraiche on top of it. Oh my god! Yeah, it was so I've, good. I have never, I've never even, I didn't even know where that thought could have been conceived. Like I, that that piece of food. Was so good. Do you know we ate nine of them? Yeah. Do you know I at first took a bite and all three flavors together. I was like, oh my god, this is so good. And then the second bite was well, the second bite was almost as good as the first one. It might have been better. I I, I tasted each individually just to see. I'm like, which part of this is so good? And I'm a huge oxtail fan. Yeah, we're big oxtail people. But the oxtail was the like that beignet. Yeah, the beignet was, was pretty good. So good, I, but for me, I think the combination of the flavor between the oxtail and the creme fraiche was that just. Was it. <sighs> yeah, there was there was not a lot beating that, and uh, but I will say I was telling you like for me I, when I eat oxtail anything that's like, you know like if you get like jerk chicken from a Jamaican spot it's gonna be spicy right. This oxtail was more sweet than spicy. I wish there would have been a little kick to the oxtail. Um, that's just a personal preference, but I will say if they would have given me just a plate of rice and the oxtail on top of it, I'm in for that too. I'd eaten 59 beignets. We almost did. Oh, eat. The, thank God. God the kitchen closed because you and I would have ordered 17 more. Oh, it was so delicious. Yeah. The kitchen closed right as we got our last order and they're like, you just made it in time. That area and was super cool, though, the the kind of the Wynwood area we're in. Yeah, there's like that Wynwood Marketplace right near us, which we haven't checked out. We're going to go check out a Colombian restaurant today. What, what was the name of the place where I got the guitar? Walt Grace Vintage. What a fucking Yo, what a cool, cool store. cool store. Holy shit. We're expecting just a guitar store or a vintage store and walked in, and there was vintage Porsches, Ferraris. Like, I we asked them, I go, hey, do you? Do you actually sell these cars? And they said, "Yeah, we sell four or five a month." I'm like, "How is?" Yeah, the, but they had some really cool guitars in there. Yeah. I almost bought my first electric guitar. But then you would have had to travel back with it. Yeah, yeah. That seems like a lot of hassle. I'm looking forward to giving away that guitar tonight. This tonight's a the guitar I bought over there is a small little parlor guitar, mm -hmm. but it had a cool kind of almost half ukulele, half guitar sound. Yeah, it's it's small just for you because you're small. I'm small. Well, you're smaller than me. Am I? Yeah. You're 5'10. I'm shorter than you. Yeah, smaller. Well, okay. But what do you. So if I was 
250 pounds, would you call me smaller than you? Right now, if I, if I was my height, which is 5'11 and a half. Five ten. <laughs> you wait, 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 wait. I said five ten originally, and then you tried to bump yourself up an inch and a half, like I wouldn't notice. There's no way you're gonna give yourself close to six feet. That's not not a chance. How can you say I'm five? I'm only five ten. I in my shoes, five ten and a half. I do. Listen, first of all, one thing I do like about modern day shoes is they all give you at least an inch and a half. That's what she said. Gross. But uh, these, I think I'm. You're five ten. Dan's five ten. Yo, if Dan's telling you he's five ten, he's lying. We've talked about this last time. If Dan Wolf. Oh, I can't wait to Dan post Wolf. This. If you are telling everybody that you are five ten, uh, I'm gonna post this. Stop the cap. Stop it. Put it. Put that cap on. You are. There's not a chance you're five ten. No way. Here's why I'm gonna post this. Not. Not once. Not never. Nope. Here's why I'm gonna post this. I hope you do. I will post it too. Yeah, and not that any of you know who Dan is. That's my uncle and his brother. Yeah, uh, and nobody will care except for me, you, and Dan Wolf, Dan, maybe John, and John, and yeah, maybe Scott and Gary, my life. Oh, we're gonna send it in the chat. Yeah, and so, but like, first of all, what's gonna make me really laugh is they don't know what cap means. Cap means lie. Like stop the lie. Like you're capping. Like you're lying. Like. Dan, either way, there's not a chance you're 5'10". If you're 5'10", Halisi's six feet then. I mean, shit. Whoa. Halisi's not taller than Dan. It feels like she is. Oh, my God. Or at least God. the same height. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, maybe that's not right. You know what else isn't right? Dan Wolf saying he's 5'10". That's all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, the, fact, the thing that I said probably wasn't true, but you know what else isn't true? Dan Wolf saying he's 5'10". Oh, for sure. Oh, man. That is... So, do you think Dan's 5'9"? At most. No. Whoa, skis. There's no... Uh, 5'9 sounds right. 5'10 doesn't. Five, just like 5'11 doesn't sound right for you. I think I'm 5'11 and a half. Nope. You keep throwing that half in there like you're going to get away with it. <laughs> you're not going to get away. No, you're not getting away with 5'11. You're definitely not getting away with 5'11 and a half. Yeah, I remember when you were... A kid, you had the, st I mean, the like you do now, just these long, the longest gazelle legs. Oh my god! Yeah, I got giraffe legs, that's for sure. And so when you were a little dude, you definitely liked um, baggier shorts, and you had these little just. No, it wasn't that I liked baggier shorts; is there were no shorts that would fit me. What do you mean? The baggy shorts, like we had to find some for length. Yeah, because I was too tall. Yeah, but then they were a bigger size, so they were super baggy. Yeah, so, you so had these it wasn't tiny by little... choice that I wanted the baggy shorts. It was the only ones that would fit. It's like when I went to go buy a dress shirt for my eighth grade grad or my high school no eighth grade graduation, and oh, you weren't with me. It was me and mom. We went to the Macy's down the street for yeah. like f four hours before my graduation because I didn't have anything like a suit or a blazer or anything nice to wear. So we went to the Macy's. Yeah, and we got. A blazer and a button down, which neither of had fit me because I have really long arms, but a really and broad shoulders, but a really small chest. So it was really hard to figure out how to, <laughs> to find something that would fit me. Every time I bought a button down, it was like, oh yeah, you need like a uh, a 17 inch neck because you have really long arms, and it was like. I just scratched my underarm. I'm so sorry, everybody. It's okay. And it was like it was like the neck was so baggy because nothing fit. I had to find something to fit my arms. Yeah, I remember some of those um, button-down shirts being super baggy on your neck. They were either super tight on my arms, and yeah. I looked like I was going to be the Hulk and rip out of it, or it was just the baggiest button-down of all time. And most, I rocked baggy for a long time. Yeah, you did. I would rather be baggy than be bust out of my clothes. Can I ask you a question about, and then you can, by the way, I hope everybody's paying attention to that. Too. Relax over there. Um, I can't even flex. I'm too tired. Uh, can I ask you it's a question? Yeah. <laughs> he's never said he's too tired to flex. He always wants to flex into the camera. He's trying to flex until he's until he can't. By the way, it is 100 percent right. Oh, I know. Listen, guys, there's gonna be a point in time where I, I'm obviously everything's gonna fall apart. 
It feels and like we're pretty close. It feels like we're pretty close, too. So Slightly I'm, torn meniscus, torn rotator cuff? I don't have a torn rotator cuff. I have a torn labrum. <laughs> Par- a partially, shoulder. Partially torn rotator. But, <laughs> but <laughs> Shoulder. But um, I, I here's what I embrace. It's so funny. You know, when I was maybe not as close to the age I am now. A hey, hundred? Yeah. I wore way baggier, and I was in better shape and a bigger dude, but yeah. way baggier clothes. Not, I mean, it's kind of back in style, not going to lie. But now that I'm older and I know that I don't have too many years left of being in what I would consider decent shape. Right. I'm I'm wearing tight shit. <laughs> I look at this shirt, dude. This shirt is baby gap size. Yeah, you went to the children's section for yeah. that and bought a schmedium. That's right. I, I <laughs> this is shirt, but you know what? Look, I'm 53. So I don't know how long. Thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how long. So you know, and I see people around my age who are start who I. I Wondered before, I'm like, why at that age are you starting? Because you're you're seeing the end of the rainbow. So you're like, I'm wearing this tight shirt while I still can. Yep. Well, good luck with that. We'll but, see how long it lasts. So let me ask you a question. You, I know that when you were younger, you were really insecure about what you considered to be how your body, how people perceived that you being skinny and all that mm-hmm. stuff. How, how, when did when did that stop? It hasn't. Is it really? Not really. It's more that it's not even people like like. It's not even more how people see me. It's just more how I see myself. I don't understand. Go ahead. Uh, I don't. I mean, I get the you're so skinny comments all the time, but that one is more just. I guess I gone over my head because it's happened for so long. Yeah. But I guess because it's happened for so long that those comments I don't listen to other people's comments, but I listen to my own. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you take you're so skinny as an insult? 50-50. Not really. I think people are more just self-projecting because they're like, you're so skinny. But then a lot of people are like, I wish I was that skinny. Right. And so uh, I know it's not. Sometimes it is an insult. 100%. Right. But Most of the time, it's not. Right. Most of the time, it's just people being Captain Obvious and pointing out what everybody else can see. Uh, but just because that it's not an insult doesn't make me not think about it. You know, I, 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 can I say two things to that? First of all, I think it's only an insult if you take it as, as an insult, insult, if that makes sense. Yep. But what a dad you, answer. But, but no, because you taking it as an insult makes me realize what you think. Of, you think about. Yeah, it, yeah. Right. And so, what is it? And because, by the way, dude, everybody has issues with their body type. Mm-hmm. You know that, right? Yep. You saw that fucking uh, article about Megan Fox. Having body dysmorphia. Oh yeah, yeah. So like it's, it's prevalent. You know, absolutely. Um, what is it that you are self conscious about? You just think that you're not. Does and has that ever affected you wanting to go to the gym? How you how you feel you about yourself? The way you look. Yeah, but I also know the only way for me to fix about how I how I feel about how I look is going to the gym. Right. But I also know that there have been certain strings in my life where, when you know, when I was at LSU, I worked out five days a week by myself, yeah. two hours, and that's what I did. That was my, what's what kept me sane. Yeah. And then I came home, and I broke my toes, and I lost all the progress. Yeah. And so that was depressing. There's been other times in my life where I found myself in a gym groove, and then something happens that then pulls me out of that gym groove, and I lose all my progress. So for me, it's more of just like, why am I going to the gym? And not when I know something is going to happen that's going to take me off my path, but when I'm like 4 for 4 or 0 for 4 of keeping my gym regiment, why do it again? Wait, you're making, that makes noises in my head. This does? Yeah. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, it's it's like a defeating purpose for me. For it's like why I go to the gym if I know that something's gonna happen that's gonna pull me off of it but and ruin all I, my progress. Yeah, I, I, I guess what I'm, I'm more wor- wondering like is has what you feel like you look like or how people see you has that does it make you self conscious to go to the gym? Does it make you self conscious 
in any other areas? Does it make you self conscious about going to the beach? Does it, any of that? No, it doesn't make me self like. I'm never self conscious about places. Like if we go to the beach, like I'm not self conscious about taking my shirt off. Yeah. Like I'm not self conscious about any of that. I don't have the. I used to have a belly, the last mm-hmm. probably about a year ago, mm-hmm. and that was self conscious. Mm-hmm. But I don't have that anymore. Mm-hmm. So I uh, not to worry about that. I, I, I'm not. I'm, I was never worried about it. I remember we were on a family tussle and we were taking photos and you and John Wolf, which is his brother. He was the photographer of the day, and he looked at me, and both of them looked at me, and they went, suck in your stomach. And I was like, oof. <laughs> that's a rough one. That's a rough pill to swallow when both your dad and your uncle look at you in the face and go, hey, bring that belly in, boy. <laughs> Don't let that stomach poke out. I was in that Vegeta tank top, too, so it was yeah. like I had six packs. On, I had a six-pack on my shirt, and then I had a six-pack of beer under the shirt. I think it was the first time I'd ever seen you with a belly. By the way, guys. The first time I've ever seen myself with a belly either. No. By the way, no, no, no yeah. hate. If you have a belly, you have a belly. That's, yeah. I just mean for me. Yeah, this is a personal thing. Yeah, hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. I mean, and also, I would say, for me, look, everybody's allowed to have look the way they want to look. Yeah, right. That's a choice. But I also know that there are certain health realities, and at twenty five, for a guy, to a lot of health issues start with men in their stomach. Right, right, and back your back it started to hurt, right? And well, I threw out my back right before COVID. But your back it started to hurt. But a lot of times that's extra weight. Like if your core is not strong, I don't want this to be like a health pod, but your core is not strong, and it, you know, sometimes that and there's extra weight there that leads can lead to back problems. We have. And I, I know because that has happened to me with a belly before. Mm. We have the way our bodies are structured. We have an inclination to have a bad back. Mm. So if you if and that's like I I I, I want to make sure that you know that I, I and I hope you didn't take it this way. I wasn't like. That was not a shaming thing. We no. I, I never was like I never talked to you about a. I I didn't want to have a belly in the photo. I, I know you so. didn't. I know you didn't. And I, yeah, I was gonna do it anyways. But then you guys beat me to the punch, dude. I will tell you right now. I, I and I guess people take things how they want to take them. I remember I was a hundred and so right now I'm probably a hundred and sixty six pounds. Okay. There was a time on Chelsea where I was 194 of not good. I had let myself, yo, dude, it was the biggest I've ever been. It, it, there's a clip of me online where I see it, and I'm like, God damn. Almost it, 200 pounds? Yeah, dude. That's not right for my frame. But I, and I was heavy. And um, this is the difference between me and, and other people, I guess. But this is what I needed. I was walking up the stairs in front of Chelsea. And I just heard her go, oh. And I go, what? She goes, your ass is so gross. And I got up the stairs and I was kind of winded. She was like, you're huge. What did she mean your ass is gross? My ass was huge, dude. Oh, 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 oh. When I gain weight, I gain it in my stomach and my ass. Congrats. And and she was like, your ass is huge. And she was like, it's gross. She said, "You're, you're big. And I was like, what? She was like, you're big. And she said, you're breathing heavy walking up the stairs. And I was like, oh. She said, you should get your shit together. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> you're right. <laughs> you're right. But, like, I I come from that. If you're a friend of mine, now, if we're random on the street. Don't talk to me. I said don't talk to me, but, like. It's not your place. Yeah. But if we're friends, if we're family, I expect to hear that stuff from you. Yeah, I won't, you know t- I, mean? I won't tell you that. You could tell me anything. I will not. Well, first of all, I'm not going to tell you your ass is gross because I won't be looking at your ass. Why not? For a, a multitude of reasons. But if it was gigantic, why am I looking at my own dad's ass? You didn't look. Are you saying look? If my dad, I don't look at his ass, but I would notice it if it was gigantic. Yeah, but also if you were walking slow up the stairs with my long gazelle legs, I would have already beat you up the stairs. And probably said something about you being out of breath rather than your yeah. fat ass. Well, you definitely would have said something about me being out of breath. Well, yeah. 
I said something about you being out of breath coming up the stairs to this place. Oh, I <laughs> So, you know, you did legs yesterday too, didn't you? Yeah. 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 That didn't help. No, no. Are, are you, are, I have one more question. Are you, if you feel better, worse about how you, more confident, less confident about how you look? You know, in your twenties, it's a it's a motherfucker, man. Nobody, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, not gonna lie. During COVID, I was doing so much ab workouts that I had, I had an eight pack. So yeah, I, I was, remember that. I was pretty confident then. Probably a little less confident now, but also, my my looks aren't what deem my confidence. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, I'm I'm not less confident because of how I look. Yeah, I mean, but but are just you... because also I don't have a six pack right now doesn't mean that I'm less confident. No, you shouldn't. By the way, the way you look. Should have nothing to do with your confidence. No, yeah, I, I show my confidence by how I dress. But but what I mean is like the way you look. Sh- okay. So uh, I, I, let me let me backtrack a little because the I do think how you present on the outside a lot of times. Mirrors how you feel about yourself on the inside. Okay. Um, not all the time, but it can present itself in different ways. Like I think if you have, I think if you walk into a house that's in disarray, I think that person whose house it is is somehow in disarray inside. I think that's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I, I understand that because so, I, I know like when I have a lot going on in my head or I'm like depressed, my room is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. It's uh, like self-projected almost. I agree. Like the kitchen, like the dishes aren't done or the trash isn't taken yeah. down or just like thing, things aren't kept up to their normal speed. Uh, you Do you agree with that? That, that somehow... Happens is... to me all the time. And so for me, I... My... I, I don't feel more or less confident when I'm because I'm in good shape or bad shape. But okay. it does happen to coincide that when I feel good about myself, I'm doing things that I perceive to be good for me. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. Like when, when the Joshua show ended. My beard was long. Beard was long. I wasn't going to the gym. I wasn't doing things that I knew. I wasn't eating well. I, I was probably smoking more weed than I should have been. Um yeah. And how do you like where does your self-destructive show up? Uh Well, I think my self-destructive shows up I I smoke a lot of weed. It's a lot of just like self-isolation. So like I'll either sit and play video games for 5 hours or sit and lay in bed and just kind of scroll on social media um not handle my sh- my stuff around the house so like the dishes will pile up or the trash won't get taken out or just like there's just shit left around the house my yeah. clothes are everywhere my suitcase from the weekend before is still not unpacked in in the living room or just stuff like that yeah okay and when you when you are when you are not feeling good about yourself, are there steps that you know you can take to kind of pull yourself out? I or usually clean. That helps you. Yeah, I usually clean because I get rid of the clutter that's in front of my eyes, and then I can start dealing with whatever else I want to. Mm, that's really smart. So I usually clean what's in front of me first before I try to clean what's in my head. Because cleaning what's in my head takes way longer to clean than what's in front of me. And do you find when you're cleaning things that are in your head, you're bumping up against basically the same shit all the time? Yeah, it's it's been the same consistent shit for the last four. How long ago was COVID? Three years. Yeah, mm, yeah, three and a half, four years, probably a little before that too. And that's more of just a like a, a feeling of of yourself. Yeah, it's just how I feel about myself. Just. You know, obviously there are comments online that we just delete and we don't think about. But, uh-huh. you know, after you get a certain amount of the same comment or a certain amount of just any comment, it it 
starts to either hit home or sink in at some point. Um, and so the depression comes from more from outside sources of people, th- the things that people are saying about you. Sorry about that. No, 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 I'm just saying that's that's a it's a contributing factor. Right. Uh, a lot of it's just how I feel about myself. Yeah. You know, it's funny, man, is that I'm sure a lot of people would look at you and um and be like, well, you know, from the outside, great life, happy dude, right? And what is I, I love the love and that's sarcastic. The well, what does he have to be sad about? His life is blah blah blah. Yeah, I, my my you know the comment that I love the most is oh you're uh your your dad's a, a rich comedian, like you have nothing to complain about. And I'm like, dude, you like I, and obviously like those ones don't really get to me, but it's like you guys have no idea the life that we had prior to this like life wasn't always this and that's like just plain and simple like life was not always what you guys now see on social media before social media was a thing by the way social media also is not real life that's true by the way also this whole thing's a simulation so there's that i don't know what that means but life's a simulation oh yeah like you ever run into somebody in a day-to-day uh, in a day-to-day basis where they're just like like they're an NPC like I, I could walk into a post office and be like all right have a great Thursday and it could be Tuesday and they would say like you too and they're just those are just people part of the simulation those people aren't real they're NPCs I'm gonna try that out today it's it, it's weird like if you if you were to walk into a place and be like oh great weather we're having right and it's raining and they'll just go along with it yeah. and then you say have a great Thursday and it's Saturday and then walk out and they'll say you too. NPC is a non-person category. I I don't know actually what NPC stands for. I just know what if someone said NPC, I just I just know what they mean. Never personal cafeteria. <laughs> I'm curious now. You you ready? Well, I got another one. Oh yeah, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it up. We're gonna play this game where you're gonna okay. guess what NPC means. Oh, I love these games. I know. Me too. Because you're always so uh, far off. Okay, NPC. Use it in a sentence. Hey. Uh, it's it's a by the way, it's a video game term. All right, use it in a sentence. Characters can sell things to NPCs to get money. Non-personal character. You are one word off, and it's the P word. Non-people character. Nope. No penis character. <laughs> <laughs> That's a woman. Uh, um, non pituitary character. You were closer with person. Non pueblo character. Uh, is that closer to person than pituitary? Well, uh, como se dice pueblo? Pueblo is town, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be right. Is yeah, that, he yeah, did that yeah, thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, pueblo is town. <laughs> uh, non. Oh, what's the next word after p- letter after P? C. You had char- non and character. I know. Right. What's the next letter after the P word? Not C. Like what in the P word? It goes P. Oh, L. Non plural character. <laughs> no, that's it. You were closer with person. Non person. <laughs> I'm gonna end this game <laughs> because that non person character. <laughs> non- hold on, hold on, no, 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 no. Non. Oh my god. Non. What, what word starts P L? Non plural. I did. I told you it was a video game r- reference. Oh. Oh. So non plural. <laughs> <laughs> what? What comes after P L? I'm not telling you. Why? I obviously don't know what it is. <laughs> non PL what? PL PLA. Non playbook. No nope. character. P- PLAY is correct. Oh, non play playa. Player. That's beach. Non they, player character. Thank you. God. Non playa. Playa is beach. I so, do know that. Yeah. So NPC is a short for non player character. It's an internet meme. That represents people who do not think for themselves or do not make their own decisions, those who lack intrapersonal communication. By the way, player, not to be confused with player. Or person. Who said person? You. <laughs> <laughs> Just not to be confused because person's not a word. Um, <laughs> person actually. Nope. 
I don't know where you're going with it, but no. Let me just say this about Plurson. That's not a word. It could be someone's last name. Kevin Plurson? No. If P L U R S E N. Kevin Plurson. P L U R S O N. Maybe. S O or S E. Hey, if your last name is Plurson, hit me up. But it sounds like it could be a last name. No, it doesn't. Kevin Plurson? Kevin Person sounds like more. It could be more of a last name than Plurson. Plurson doesn't sound like a last name? No. P L U R S O N. Google Plurson. Last name. Are you telling me Plurson isn't a last name? It's got to be a last name. I'm just going to type in Plurson. Tommy Plurson? The Plursons? From down the street, that's their last name, isn't it? There is a TikTok for Plurson. There is a Plurson on Ancestry.com. Plurson family history. Thank you. The Plurson family name was found in Scotland in 1871. Uh, Kevin there were Plurson. five five Plurson families living in. Whoa! I'm gonna try this. I want you to read that with a Scottish accent. The whole thing. No, I gotta try this. I gotta try this city first because Ren F- Freshwire. Frushire? Renfrushire. Let me see. Not that I can read this without my glasses. Boy, you're, the font on your phone is so small. You're old. Holy shit. It was Re- Renfrushire? R- this e- is N- the font you use? Yeah. R-E-N-F-R-E-W-S-H-I-R-E. Renfrushire. There we go. It's Renville, Minnesota. That's Lars, where they live now. Lars Edward Plerson. That's a good name, actually. Yo, dude. Lars Plurson? Plurson, I knew that was a last name, but I thought, I didn't know if, yeah, S-O-N seems right. The Plursons? You wouldn't go to the Plurson's house for There's like- There's also Plurson separately. Huh? Like Plur and then Son. The first name is Plur, last name Son? No, it looks, sounds like sounds like double last name. Jacob Plur Son? Yeah. Mm. Did you ever want to switch your name? Did you ever want to change your name? Did no, you ever, we did talked. You we've talked about this before. Yeah, before, but I thought about what a a cool. Uh, a cool I always first thought you had a very, be. and you knew that you were almost a different first name. You know the other first name, Charlie. Yeah, I'm really glad I wasn't Charlie. Charlie Wolf. Although I would have avoided all the Twilight references in middle school had I been named Charlie. But you would have had different. You wouldn't have been called Jake or Baker, the money maker. True. I would have missed out. On, I definitely would have missed out on some nicknames for sure. You still would have had Boomer. I could have been called Chuck though. You could have been called Chuck, Charles, Charlie, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, Charleston, Charleston Chew. I like it in it. Chuckle, Chuckleberry Finn. You Chuckleberry Finn. God. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna call my friend Charlie that. Well, uh, my friend Charlie, his last name is Wood. So I called him Chuck Wood, but then I said, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Because his last, the last two are chuck wood. How many, then did he say, I've heard that for my entire life? No, actually, I think I was the first one to do that. Really? Yeah. What Charlie, about? if you see this, let me know if I was. I don't, I don't remember if I was or not. Excellent uh, uh, musician, by the way, Charlie Wood. Yeah, he's also doing some acting now. He is? Mm-hmm. That's what he's getting into. He posts a lot of his uh like audition tapes or like bloopers and stuff on his Instagram. It's pretty he, funny. He was a handsome he's dude. A ridiculously funny guy. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I, I will tell you, it made me laugh when his parents came over to the house to talk to us about weed. Yeah, because you were super high when they were yeah, talking. Yeah, I was it was such a hypocritical conversation that I was like, you know what? I'm gonna smoke some weed for this. And I feel like I feel like if if, if your kids, friends' parents are coming over to talk about what they think is going wrong or something about drugs, I feel like you have to be high for it. I I I was only high, and I didn't mean to, to be disrespectful to them, and I didn't tell them I was high, so that's why I don't think it was disrespectful. But I knew that you were you were taking the bullet for your friends. Yeah, because I wasn't going to get in trouble, and they knew that they they knew that too. They were like, "Hey, sorry, but." Your, your friends. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, were yeah, like, yeah. hey, but the only way for us to ever hang out again is if you take this bullet. And I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, you took the drug bullet for your friends. More than one friend, by the way. Yep, friends, plural. And I Person. and I knew that. And so and I was not going to blow up your spot. But I also was like, and I respected you taking the bullet for them and not throwing everybody under the bus. Yep. But I was just like, but in in honor of that, I stood lockstep with you and smoked weed before our family meeting. You know what I mean? My man. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was really, that was a fun little neighborhood. Yeah, well, I, 
well, I live next to we lived next to two people who ended up being two of my better friends in life. Yeah. Uh Charlie Wood and Riley S- S- I always want to say Sprague to make him angry, but it's Sprague. Yeah. Um Sprague. Um and then yeah, those were like two two separate homes for me. Except Charlie had cats, so I didn't go over to his house very much. That's right. Do you and, remember that? And also, his parents wouldn't let me come over. <laughs> Not after our meeting. <laughs> Not after I was 16. Do you remember, really, they wouldn't let you come over? Remember how they wouldn't let him come over? Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was one day after winter break. He definitely must have thrown you extra hard under the bus. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. No, no, 100%. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. That's cool. Charlie and I are still friends. No hard feelings about it. No, dude. And you I'm not going to do- lie. That, that was kind of the plan between the three of us. I told him, I was like, yo, if you guys get caught, blame me. Because I'm not the one who's going to get in trouble. Bet you if American or any of these airlines offered like a no kid flight. Sold out. I, a hundred percent. It would sell out. A hundred percent. So it's not I, a bad idea. I, no don't think it's a, I don't think it's a bad idea. I don't think you could maybe sustain a whole airline, but you could do some no kid flights. Yeah. I think you could. Okay. And so. I mean, if the price, if the price was right, you could get me. For sure, on a no no kid airline, every single time I would fly. Well, I think you might be able to talk somebody into a no kid airline on a red eye. Right. Any, anyways, so I think that like just floating that out there, I think it's a good idea. Uh, as somebody who travel with kids, crying. Yeah, I agree with you. It's mortifying. Yeah, you don't think the parents are embarrassed that their kids you're, are screaming, keeping everybody up? You're not. You're not embarrassed, dude, but you're you are understanding. You're yeah, like, oh, absolutely. I'm really, you know, and it's stressful for you too. It's stressful for you too. Because you're the only one who can get them to stop yelling. Yeah, that's why I used to give you Benadryl, but smart, yeah, good man. But is that why I like smoking weed so much? I hope not. It might be. Um, I I think that that person is a symbol of so much that is happening in today's society where you are so entitled it's not just that your your only view of the world is is through your little lens yeah and that like that every man you everyone's living their own life and as everyone's living their own life nobody's thinking about your life so why would you think every everything should match up perfectly? Absolutely, you know. Yeah, it was. Uh, but yeah, she's catching a wh- whole bunch of shit. She for should. A hundred percent. Like the fact that she would wake up, be petty enough to buy Wi-Fi just yeah. to go and complain to Twitter, and like her first tweet was like the max amount of characters. Her second tweet after that was P.S. I hope you see this and I hate you. And it's like, yo. Yeah. What what is the problem? Look, like why what's what such the hostility for no reason I, whatsoever? I I find myself sometimes on planes. You know what gets me is a little pet peeve and then I'm I'm just like, dude, get your shit together. Why why would you let that bother you? Because I'm really trying to I'm trying to not let other people control my emotions. Right. I'm really trying. But one of my little pet peeves on the plane, because, you know, we fly early, Mm. is people on the 6 a.m. flight who leave the shades open. Yo, on the flight here. Oh, yeah, dude. I, it wasn't a 6 a.m. flight. It was a noon flight, so it was a little later. But noon in Vegas, it's hot and it's bright, okay? Yeah, Yeah. I got the window seat because I like to sleep on all my flights. So I'm going to bed. And I'm sitting... And the flight takes off, and I put my – I'm wearing a hoodie, but I put a jacket over my face because I sleep with my mouth open. And if you've seen, <laughs> if you've seen online, he takes photos of me when I'm sleeping with my mouth open and, like, photoshops me into different scenes. So I'm trying to prevent that. <laughs> Yo, you've been sleeping with your fucking jacket over your face. It's really messing up my – Yeah, hey, look, man, you got to have a counter. You know what I'm saying? That's my counter. So uh, but I so- should have got you last night. I was awake and you were asleep. That's true, yeah. I'm going to get you tonight. You're going to be asleep. You're not going to do mushrooms tonight. You're going to be way t- more tired than I am. I'm on a nap this afternoon. It doesn't mean you're still not going to be tired. You're right. We have two shows again tonight. And friends coming to the second show. Who's coming to the second show? Tiff? 
Oh, and her kids. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So we got to be alert for that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But so, and I'm sitting at this, uh, sitting at the window on the plane, and the couple, the couple siblings, whatever they were, next to me, tapped me. Both siblings. Of th- I, I hadn't seen that coming. I thought couple. I I either can I be honest? It was either a couple, his mom, or they were siblings. Dude, that is that three. Runs, by the way, three massive differences. That runs the gamut. I I think the idea that that they could have been husband and wife or mother and son is well. This is why I think that's why I think they're not a couple, and this is why because as we landed, like there are sometimes I put my headphones on, yeah, and I keep the soundproof on, but I don't play any music, so that people think that I can't hear them, <sighs> yeah, but I'm listening that. to their conversation right next to me, right. So if you ever see me in an airport with my headphones on, there's a 50-50 shot. I'm not even listening to anything, okay? So, and they start talking. And she said something to him. She said, only a week and a half of this, and then you can go back to your regular life. And then he said, he said, oh, yeah, back to your regular life, too. You seen any of your boyfriends while we're out here? And she just laughed and said, I don't have any boyfriends out here. So it either means mom yeah, definitely or sister. Not wife. Not wife. Not wife. But so okay. I'm sitting there, and the plane takes off, right? And I'm going to sleep. And then all of a sudden, I feel something tap me or somebody. And I'm like, nope, nope, I'm staying asleep. Don't touch me again. And then somebody taps me again. And I pull that jacket off kind of fast. And I was like, yes, can I help you? And I keep my headphones on. And he goes like this. And I was like, sure. And so I slide my headphone back. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, hey, could you lift one of the Because sh- I had two shades yeah. where I was. He goes, hey, could you lift one of the shades up? We just want to see us take off for a little while. And I was like. You were a good dude. You did I right really, because there was two shades, right? That's the only reason I said yes, because yeah. the one directly next to me would have been right in my face. I'm not saying yes to that. There was one a little further away, and I was like, sure, whatever. And I almost said to them, yeah, man, if you want to look out the window next time, buy the window seat. Because I, that's, for me, look, if you sit in the window seat, you control the shade. Yeah, I agree okay? with that. Plain and simple. Like, if you sit in the window, you control the window shade. That is the deal. Just like if you sit in the middle seat, you get both armrests. That's true also. Just like I gave the woman next to me, I gave her my armrest because that's the rule. If you sit in the middle, you get both armrests. And if you ever fight against that, you're wrong, okay? Plain etiquette. And if you sit in the aisle, all you get, you know why I hate the aisle? Because there's nothing good to it. All you get is first dibs on the drinks and snacks that come down the aisle? Nope. I hate... Two things. I hate people's backpacks hitting me in the side of the face. Oh. And I hate, listen, inevitably, strangers are going to be, their butts are going to be rubbing like, up against your shoulder. Yeah, you know what else I hate? Like, I have to extend my legs when I am yeah. on a plane. My, you know how many times that drink cart hits my knee? Every time. Oh, boy, does that hurt. It hurts so much every time. But so I was sitting there, and no joke, the, the blind may have been open for two minutes. And then my legs started to heat up, and my legs were getting oh, oh yeah, that sun was coming in hot. hot, yeah, hot hot. And so no joke, I sat there and I I barely flinched. I kept the jacket over my face, and actually no, I, I took it off a little bit and I reached over and I shut it and I looked both, back at both of them and then I, as I was looking at them, I just put it back over my face and I was like, yeah, this is, that's done. I was waiting for them to ask me to open it when we were descending. Yeah, and I was gonna tell them straight to their face, no. I will tell you, here's my thought on this. I agree window controls window. I also am with you that, like, I've sat next to people when they're like, because, I mean, maybe they don't fly a lot, and they're like, can we see takeoff? I'm I'm okay with that also. I'm also with you that a lot of times I turn to put that shade down because the sun is shining right on you. It's it, bright, it, dog. It heats, ah, it heats, it heats up me up, yeah. like one part of your leg. Yeah. I'm, but on top I'm, of that, I can't sleep. I can't sleep with the sun. Yeah, the worst part is is like when it's the person across the uh, like across yeah. and the other window who's got his window open and they're just uh, they're either sleeping or staring out of it and I'm like yo you got to close that or I'm going to freak out. I, the the window open sometimes gets me. It's why I've also brought the the jacket for my face now because of that exact person. Like if someone across on the other window has their window open, I can't sleep, so I'm putting something over my face. You know what I had on the flight over? Uh leg shaker. Ooh, that's me. The leg shaker in a movie theater also, when you get a leg shaker somewhere in your row. Yeah. It can it can really It's why I go to sleep. It's because I am I am a leg shaker and I'm a fidgeter and I'm a always try to have something occupying my hands. So I I sleep. 
Also, because it makes the plane go, it makes the ride go by faster. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, all right, keep going. What do you want to talk about? My brain's not working. There was, um, what else were we talking about? You want to talk about the shows last night? Yeah, in Miami. In Miami? I mean, we talked about your mushroom show already. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what else happened in that first show. Oh, the roast beef table. Roast beef table. Was that first show or second show? First show. Definitely. That, that group of women. That one. Yeah, uh, that was pretty funny last night when you said. Well, she asked you if she asked you that question, and I very politely asked her to keep her vagina in her pants for the rest of the show. Yeah, that was pretty funny. And then she called me rude, and then I just asked her very politely to stay. I keep think it. that was second show. That was first show. It was hundred percent. You were on mushroom second show. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, the first show. That's right. Yeah, I, I, that. I mean the the saying "keep your vagina in your pants." It's great. Made me laugh. I don't think I've really heard it before. I've heard keep your dick in your pants, obviously. Yeah, and look, it's the same thing for women. Just, you know, different body part. No, I get the difference between a vagina and a penis. No, no, I didn't say you did. <laughs> I, I was just I was just more saying, like, it, it's it's universal. It can be used for men and women. Yeah. I, <laughs> I will tell you, man, I Miami's a different animal. Yeah. Those crowds are. I, I really gotta work. I gotta work for the laugh. I'll tell you this right for now. For sure, Miami crowd, and I do like they're gonna laugh, and then they're gonna make you earn that laugh again. Yeah, they're gonna make you earn that laugh again. This has been for me so far the the roughest two shows for punchlines and laughs for me. Yeah, I, I, I thought about something in the green room last night that I'm gonna try and write a joke about. Okay, I would. I love. Oh, not write a joke about. It. I think it's gonna be something for like crowd work. I, okay. Y- yeah. That you know you just started last night with crowd work. Yeah, and I, I asked. I was like, "Hey, anybody here for an anniversary or a birthday or a date?" And then nobody answered. And then somebody just out of the background or out of the back just went birthday. And I was like, "Oh, okay, happy birthday. How old are you?" And then nobody responded. And I was like, "Well, I guess I'm not fucking good at this then." Yeah. <laughs> so that made me laugh. I mean, I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try it again. Yeah, um, I would. I would, and you know what else I would do to to start to get your confidence up with that is I would, like you are planning right now, is have some stock sayings or stock jokes that you know you mm-hmm. can roll out. That's that's when as an early young comic, that's kind of what you do is you have some like oh this is what I'm gonna say if they say this mm-hmm. right, and it just kind of. Uh, gives you confidence and energy going into the rest of your set. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I I just I was listening to you, but also at the same time thinking about how I was. You going were barely to, listening to no, me. No, I was I was listening to you, but I was also thinking about how I wanted to do the the thing I thought about last night in the crowd work. So I'm gonna try something. Why don't you tell me right now? No. Well. Oh. No, I can't because then it'll ruin my crowd work for any other show that people come. That's to. true. Oh, we should really start looking at your sets, dude. I, I really want to. I want. There's one of those stories I really want to help you kind of touch yeah, we, up. I we definitely, definitely have one we can touch up. Um, but yeah, we're having a great time here in Miami. Um, great food. Weather. I would say great weather, but it's been thunderstorming for the last two days. This is how it goes down. Yeah, no, that's fine. It rains pretty hard for about thirty minutes and then disappears. T- tell me what else. Tell me, hey, tell me what else do you want to talk about, or else I'm gonna go to sleep and go back. There was things we wanted to talk about, and um, as usual, we both forgot what we were gonna talk about. Well, I, I, my came in literally with my brain as a clean slate because it, I'm having a hard time. Well, so we talked, we were talking about the mushroom shows. Oh, oh, oh! If you have a Netflix subscription and you would like to go watch a new movie, there is a movie oh, trending in the top ten right yeah. now called Forever My Girl, written and directed by my beautiful mother. Bethany Ashton Wolf. Yeah. So it's in that top ten right now, so it should pop up on everybody's uh, trending. So if you're looking for something, how awesome is that though? Crazy. That that is now on Netflix. Listen, man, your mom, um, it blew. What she did with that book and that movie, uh, blows my mind. Right. Absolutely. So, so not only was it a low budget film that made five I, five times what the budget was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I remember the numbers. Um, and and so and she, she did it without sh- stars. Nobody in that movie is a star. They weren't. 
I mean, not like not like a list, nah. but people people knew who they were. Nah, I knew who Alex was. Okay, but on in the pantheon, and by the way, I love Alex Rowe. Super good guy. He super was nice guy. So good in this movie. It was yeah. crazy. But you might have seen it on TikTok. It's been trending on TikTok. He, I, even he would tell you, I nobody knew who he was. I, I mean, did. I mean, there's obviously some people, but he wasn't like. In, I did. Jessica wasn't a big actress, and Abby at the time hadn't been in every movie. She's yet. in everything now. Yeah. Oh my God! Everywhere I look, little Abby is doing anything. But it's pretty amazing. So your mom took this group. And um, it's like the bad news bears. Yo, you know, the first weekend it was in the theater, it sold and didn't get a wide release and it didn't get put in um, these huge theaters. Again, right. Right. But she, I think it was crazy. Like she sold ninety eight point seven percent of the tickets. No, she, she did really well, especially opening weekend a- and uh, and second week. Too. And so she did yeah, well. And it was a, a amazing. Lot of it, it, what was amazing to me was that this is a whatever with Hollywood, whatever. But like, because it wasn't considered, this was right. This is fucking made me so mad. But she handled it with such grace because that's just who she is. Mm-hmm. This was right in the uh, time when Hollywood was like, we need to hire female directors. Yep. We, you know what, we need to hire female. And so this was, she got this made and financed and wrote it and directed it pre that whole movement. Right. This movie comes out. It crushes. But because it it wasn't cool, she wasn't directing a Game of Thrones. Right. Or whatever the fuck. She didn't get the benefit from the, hey, let's hire female directors. Because... Yeah. What her movie appealed to was kind of middle America family. Yeah. And Hollywood did Doesn't not like that. Did not consider that cool. And so the people hiring walk, walked right past this woman during the middle of this huge movement who actually made something that made money and that people liked. Actually made something good. It was it I I she handled it so amazingly. Mm-hmm. I, I was so mad for her. And her attitude was like, I can't. Isn't it weird how that happens? I feel like there are some things that I'm more mad for you than you are about. And you're the same way for mom. But the person who you're mad for isn't as mad. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm I, not I like, uh, what would you be mad for me about? Like something that considers a slight? Uh, I don't think something I would talk about publicly on a podcast. No? Well, it involves somebody else who's also in the industry who, okay. who has uh, opinions about you that I don't agree with. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know if that's a, a thing worth talking about. Uh, you can. Do you know who I'm talking about? Me? I, I don't think so. We can always edit it out if you... Uh, the, the fact that Rogan doesn't think you're funny. Oh, uh, it doesn't bother me. Bothers the fuck out of me. Yeah. Like, so much. People are allowed to think what they want to think. Yeah, but it's, it's about a level of respect. Like, the fact that when we were in Austin, you went to Mothership, and he didn't let you in the green room. Yeah, that's, but, that's, that's, I, I think the rule was you have to be performing on the main stage to be able to go into the green room. And I wasn't, and, I, and listen, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you right now, if Joe Diaz wasn't performing, he would have been allowed to go in the green room. Yeah, but he and Joey... Look, dude, look, look. Let me just say this. And people ask me about Rogan all the time. And I and I know... I know why he... I don't even know if this doesn't like. It's because you're funnier than him. No, 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 no. I know why... I've been told, so I can't... It's never come from his mouth what his issue is with me. I... I, it, once I was told what it was, I I dismissed the entire situation because it's so, I it's so not it's such a non-issue. When did you put your sunglasses on? Yeah, I put them on earlier to did keep you? me awake. Did I just notice? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt uh, you. I just right. I just noticed you put your sunglasses yeah, on. Yeah, I put them on earlier to Whoa. stay awake. But but it's such a non-issue for me, and I think, look, man. Uh, the dude is 
has done more for comedy than probably a- almost anybody. He loves stand up. I I respect his work ethic. I respect how good he is to his friends. Um, I I think what he's done for the comedy community and to show a lot of us that you don't need the typical gatekeepers to have the career you want has been amazing. I think he's lifted his friends up in a crazy fucking way. But y- not everyone's going to like you. And and you know what I mean? Yep. And, and the only... I can tell you the only bummer for me is that he's somebody that I respect professionally. Mm-hmm. And... um. I don't need to be best friends with everybody. Right. It would be nice if your peers respected you. And the, and I will say the only bummer has been, you know, because I haven't been on his show, there are other comics that I really like and respect who kind of you you mm, you don't get the same respect back right. because you haven't been given the nod from the king. Right. Right. And that to me is the only kind of a bummer, only because I am a community dude. Right. I like, and I'm wishing for everybody to do well. Right. And, um, yeah, it's a bummer. There's just some people that I would love to be able to go, hey, you're a comic, I'm a comic. We've been doing the same amount of time. I've known you 20 years. Let's chop it up. And just because I haven't got the nod from Joe, I feel like that doesn't happen with some folks. Which I think is dumb. Yeah, man. But like I said, it, he's a you get to live your own life. Not every I bet you there are some people that I that I that want to be friends with you then or want to be friends with me or wanna you know, or wondering why I don't Whatever, it, but like I can't live my life for wh- what they want. Right, our relationship to be. Right. I can only live my life for how I do it. Mm-hmm. But I appreciate, and I will tell you, man, I appreciate you. Your mom feels the same way. I appreciate you guys. It's a hey, man. At the bottom line, it's a family thing. So that's yeah. why it's like for me. I feel like it's disrespectful towards my family. So it's disrespectful to me. So that's why I, uh, I take it. Uh, I take it to heart. And mom is probably the same way. Um, yeah, and I don't blame her. Yeah, your mom does. It's so funny that both of you, that's the first name. Hunter, it's, can I be honest? Yeah. It's the only name. Yeah. It is the only name because everybody else who we've met or we've talked to has that respect for you and for us. The one time I met Rogan was outside the store. Joe Diaz introduced me because that's my uncle. And he went up and I think he knew I was your kid. Because he shook my hand, but didn't look me in the face. He shook my hand while still talking to Joey. Like, he didn't even say, hey, nice to meet you kind of shit. Like, he was I will straight say up this. focused on other things. I, which is, because I think, actually, when we walked up, Joe did say, hey, this is Joshua's kid. Yeah. I, I and will it was say, like, right when that was said, it was like I wasn't yeah, a person. It was w- crazy. Dude, I will say, he's always been super respectful in that when he sees me, shakes my hand, hugs it out. And like, that's it. That's all you can ask. Yeah, for I, I, you call it respectful. I call it fake. I call it two faced. I don't think it's two faced because he's. It doesn't matter. I don't want to talk about this dude anymore. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's why I wasn't yeah, trying yeah, to say yeah, it yeah. earlier. But yeah, then I we, appreciate we can, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but so we'll probably. Uh, I don't know if we'll edit that part out because that was the last ten minutes of our podcast. No, we don't need to edit it out. There, there listen, man. I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm not running from anything in my life this is a situation i'm not mad about it i'm not i i I tell you what i i i mean i yeah i'm not mad about it i'm not i'm not i don't talk about it a lot i don't spend time thinking about it you don't sleep over it that's for sure no 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 no, no, no. and that's and that's the uh that's the grown-up way to handle that by the way um it will it's it's also the self preser- preservation way. Like yeah. I, I can spend time in my life thinking about something that I have no control to change. Right. Or I can do some shit that actually is fun. 
Yeah, that's true. You yeah. preoccupy your mind with something else. Um, and I think on that note, that's a good note to uh, start plugging where we are and get on out of here and go get some Colombian food. Mm, I want some. I'm gonna get a coffee and. Um, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Shake Wolf on TikTok. Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Uh, Columbus, that's our next date. End of or er, second to last week in June. It's I believe again the twenty second, the twenty third, and the twenty fourth. And C bus, uh, come see us. We love going to Ohio. We have a lot of fun there. Um, but comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and find out where you can get tickets. Um, family tussle. Which oh. I forgot we were supposed to talk about today, which I'm just now remembering. Um, season one is already out. Season two will be dropping soon. Uh, a lot more funny shit for you guys to see. We're very excited for it. Um, and Miami. You, you Miami. won't hear this. Miami, you won't hear this, but two more shows tonight. Saturday Night Late Show. We're going to give away a guitar. Um, that's true. And then we do that at all Saturday Night Late Shows. So Columbus, that's your that's your cue, right? Um Anything else? Did you say Josh Wolf Comedy? I said Josh Wolf Comedy and ComedianJoshWolf.com. Hey, spread the word about this podcast. Yeah, like, uh, you know what we always ask. Like, uh, subscribe, follow, leave a review, leave a comment. It helps us so much. We really appreciate you guys. Um, I'm starving. You ready? I'm ready. Hasta luego, huh? Later. <laughs>